Well, I'm gonna have to change a hub on this truck. So I didn't do this, but uh, this truck belongs to me now, so unfortunately this problem also belongs to me. Apparently at some point in the past, somebody went to put this wheel back on here, probably after changing a tire or something, and they turned some moron loose, I'm guessing with a one inch impact that had no idea what he was doing, and he way, way over torqued these nuts that hold the wheel on. So. Long story short, what's happened here, aside from the obvious ones that he sheared completely off, uh, the, the nuts that are still left on here won't even come off. The studs are just spinning in the hub, so the hub's not even holding the studs tight. The holes in the hub are wallered out, and it's junk. I mean, a wallered out hole ain't good for nothing, so pretty sure it ain't going nowhere. You gotta say that or else it'll go somewhere. Uh, I think the first thing I need to do here, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that if I don't block these hydraulic lines off that go to the brakes, these are hydraulically operated brakes, that when I pull the hub out of the brake housing here, I'll lose all the hydraulic oil out of the truck if I don't block these lines. So the first thing I need to do is pull these shields off here and get those lines blocked where they go into this brake housing. All right, I've got those shields off there now. So these two lines right here are the two that I want to get blocked off. Those are the cooling lines. One's pressure, one's return, obviously. That's what uh, cools the brakes off. And then that's the application line. I'm not going to worry about it. I don't think I'll lose much oil out of it. So um, before I go any further here, I want to make it abundantly clear that I have never done this job before, and I have no idea what I'm doing. I got after this the pressure washer a little bit, cleaned it up. Make it a little easier to not get dirt in the oil. Got me a couple pieces of sheet copper cut here. So I'll take these and I'll slip them down in between the line and the housing. You know, just I'll back these clamp bolts off a little bit. Slip those up in there and then snug the bolts back up and that'll block those lines off. They look like a kindergartner made them, but they'll work. I've sealed lines off like that before. All right, I got those in there. Looks like the bleeding's pretty much stopped. So I'll keep an eye on it, but I think I'm good. Next thing I'm gonna do is pull this tire off here. I would pull the wheel and tire off, but I can't get the wheel to come off because like I said, the hub's junk and the studs are just spinning inside the hub. So I can't get those nuts off and there's no way to hold the studs from the backside. So the best I can do is pull the tire off and then I'll have to pull the final drive and, and then pull the hub and the wheel off as one piece. Pulling the valve stem out. This is what you call a five piece wheel. Pretty simple to deal with really. I just broke the front bead just by pushing on it with the telehandler there. And I've got an air over hydraulic bead breaker for these two, but usually you don't need it when they're good and clean like this one is. There's the locking ring. Those people that do this every day for a living are probably laughing at me, but that's all right. I can take it. I don't change tires for a living. I change them for myself every once in a while when I need to, and that's about it. So 
I am definitely not a pro. And I don't claim to be. If I could just get that out of there, I could grab it. Let me get a little better tool for that. Let's start work a little better here. Should be able to get right a hold of that. Something like that. And there's the old ring. Now, I just back off of it and I just have to pull this out off of the rim in here. All I did is back away from it with the telehandler and that inner bead's almost falling out on its own. So this inner groove here, that's the groove for the O-ring and then this outer groove is for the locking ring, which is right there. So the reason they call this a five piece wheel, you've got one, two, the locking ring is three. And you've got uh, the wheel rim itself, which is four. And then there's another flange just like that right there on the back side that makes five. So I didn't get to use the air over hydraulic bead breaker on this one because it came apart so easy. But uh, I've got a little bit of video of that thing working. I'll throw that in here now so you can see that. coming it's gonna go now I'm just going to use this jack real quick to uh, push this back bead off. It should push pretty easy, so it shouldn't be a big deal. I'll just go a little bit at a time, take it easy. I don't want to shove the box out from underneath it or anything like that. Yeah, it's going to go. It's going real easy now. All right, time to get this planetary out of here now. Looks like Cleveland Brothers went through this at some point. The tag doesn't have a date on it, but that's uh, irrelevant to the problem that I've got here anyway.
come off there, but it did. Worked out pretty good though, really. Didn't even spill anything. I'll let this drain down. It's probably about as far as I'm gonna go with it for today. Oil looks nice and clean though. Gears look all right from what I can see so far. Back to work on this for a little bit here today. So I got all the bolts out of the planetary, as you can see. Got a lifting eye on it here. There's two pusher holes in this planetary to push it away from the hub, one down there, and then the other one I got the lifting eye in. So I'll push it away from the hub and probably slide it out here to the edge of the wheel rim. And then when I get it out there, I'll hook onto this lifting eye and grab a hold up with the telehandler. See, normally you'd have a hold of this picking up on it by now but i can't do that because this wheel's still on here it's fixing to go though now that thing's really not that bad it's not light by any means Alright, that gear's already dropped down. I'll just get rid of this shaft. I think the next thing that needs to happen is those bolts right there need to come out and then that plate will come off and then I think maybe some things will come apart after that not real sure but I'm just gonna keep taking stuff apart till I figure it out or I could go check the manual but I'm probably not gonna do that I just want to point out that I'm using a chrome socket on this here impact and uh, I'm not even wearing my safety glasses I've got to do something in every video to trigger the people that are drowning in the corporate safety Kool-Aid. Okay, bolts are loose and there was some definite movement there. Alright, we got some shims back here. We're going to want to keep up with those. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this ring gear out of here. I don't think I really have to, but might as well do it just so I know how it comes apart. There's a snap ring up here. I've already got it compressed together and it's past the groove. And then this whole ring gear should just slide out of here. Here's the snap ring. All right, so now it's time to support this wheel rim and all this. I'll come in here with the telehandler, put the fork in here somewhere. Probably take a couple of ratchet straps, one on the front, one back here. That way I've got some adjustability like this. And I mean, I can tilt the telehandler like that too anyway. And try to work this thing out of here.
both the bearing races and this hub look really good. There's the big spline piece I was talking about that slides into the brake unit. So this is the brake right here. It's got a bunch of discs in there. This is just like a clutch pack and like a power shift transmission. Same concept, makes a really good brake, really strong and they last forever. So that's pretty much it for the disassembly. I'll get this all wrapped up in plastic before it gets rained on and it'll be time to go part shopping. Well, I can go about 40 feet over there and find two of them. Or I can go about 15 feet over here and find four of them. But uh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up going over here. That's just a parts unit. That'll never be a complete truck again. And this thing will probably never get used like it is either, but as of right now, I mean, you can put wheels and tires on that thing and drive it around. So I hate to tear it apart when I've got one over here that won't ever be whole again. All right, let's see if the little 20 tonner's got enough to do it. fairly scary but I need to get some blocks in there underneath that uh, brake part of that axle before it falls all right letting her down I'll get these parts torn out of here see what we got Good, that's a good sign. No big chunks on the magnet, just some fine particles, that's normal. like more good parts here not seeing anything wrong with this planetary at all so that shaft and gear will just slide out of there and then it's the same as what you see me do before pull that plate off and then uh, pull the hub off. All right, there's what I'm after. Well, I don't really need the ring gear in there, but this hub is what I'm after. There's the bearing that rides in that cup. It looks really good. Everything here looks really good. No damage. Went ahead and pulled this half of this outer dual cone seal out of here. I don't want to let it sit out here and get rusty or beat up or anything. They're pretty expensive. This is the damaged wheel and hub that I pulled off there. So I just got finished cutting these nuts off the studs with the torch. 
cutting the sides of the nuts off anyway. So I'll get those busted the rest of the way off there and see if I'm gonna be able to save this wheel or not. All right, here's the wheel with the slag and shit all cleaned off of it. It's fine, it could be reused. There's a couple spots where I got a little too sporty with the torch, but that won't hurt anything. So, not sure if I'll use this one or not. I've got six other ones here, but it definitely wouldn't bother me to reuse it if I needed to. Okay, so here's the good hub that's going on the truck. I've already got the dual cone seals put in it, as you can see. They went in pretty easy. Only took me probably 10 or 12 minutes to get both those seals put in. Seemed to have good spring pressure all the way around on both of them. Torque rings are in nice and even all the way around, so I think I'm good to go. I'm not going to celebrate until it's all together and it's not leaking, but... I just used this gasket, strape, gasket scraper tool here with this flat edge and uh, went all the way around like this. Push that torque ring in nice and even. This one here is a little harder to put in than this one down here, but neither one of them are a big deal. So I ended up reusing the torque rings off the truck that we're fixing because there's nothing wrong with them. They're still good and round. And I'm going to end up reusing the bearing cups and bearings and all that too. There's nothing wrong with any of that stuff, so I'm not going to change it. It's just an old used truck. If I was rebuilding it from the ground up, I'd change all that stuff, but that's not what's happening here. So this right here is an uh, old torque ring that came off the truck that I pulled this hub off of, and this one is not any good. You can probably tell there this edge where my thumb is is kind of flat and square. And that's not how that should be. It should be perfectly round. This is a new one. So this one's been in there so long that it's flattened out and you wouldn't want to try to reuse that. That's junk. It wouldn't put the right spring pressure pushing outward on the sealing rings to make them seal up. This is all good to go. Time to stick it on the truck. All right, I gotta get this thing stuffed in there. And all those splines on that hub have to line up with the splines in the brake disc so probably not going to be real easy to do but i'll see what happens here it's got to be careful not to hurt these dual cone seals for not right now i'm not up against anything so
think it started in there. It needs to come down just a little bit and uh, I'll probably have to rock it back and forth as it continues to slide into those brake discs because I'm sure they're not all still lined up like they were. like it needs to go up just a little bit and then it'll come on in maybe a little bit more. Yeah, it's in the dual cone seals back here. They're touching, so it just needs to come down a little, close that gap up in the bottom, and then I can put my powder bearing in that's on that uh, oh I don't know what you'd call it a stub shaft with a gear on it and uh, pretty much it's on though Got this thing set in here now so you can see the splines on the inside of here those spline onto the axle housing i don't know if you can see those splines in there or not it's too dark but so that splines onto the axle housing and then the ring gear will come in here and spline into these splines that are on this thing there's a snap ring that holds the ring gear to that so that keeps all of that stuff stationary and then the planetary rotates around on the inside of the ring gear. So I don't think it matters what orientation this thing is in. It just needs to be on there. I'm gonna roll it around like that just to make it a little easier to deal with the snap ring. All right, so what I'm doing now is setting the preload on the bearings. And the way that you do this, several steps involved. The first thing you do is you measure the thickness of this retainer cap or retainer plate, whatever you want to call it. You measure that at each one of these three holes. So you take three measurements. That's from this machine surface to the rear machine surface on the back side of this. You take those three measurements, you make an average of them and then the next thing you do is you take a depth measurement from the same machine surface through each one of these three little holes to the axle spindle. So you've gotta have a depth mic to do that. Which I didn't have one that would measure deep enough. I needed to be able to measure between one and two inches to do this and everything I had would only measure it up to an inch. So I had to buy this depth mic and wait for it to show up. This is a Midu Toyo. Pretty happy with it so far. It comes with four different rods. This one will measure anywhere between zero and four inches deep. So anyway, I made the measurement through those three little holes to the axle spindle. So these measurements on the left, those are the thickness of that retainer cap. The number on the bottom is my average. Those are the three measurements through the three little holes with this depth mic to the spindle. The number on the bottom is my average there. So then it says what you do is you take those two numbers and you find the difference between them, which I've done right here. The difference is 149 thousandths. And then it says to add four thousandths to that. So that brings me to 153 thousandths. And it says that's the thickness of the shim pack that you wanna put in there behind the retainer cap or retainer plate. So here are the shims that originally came out of it. I've got a rough measurement on these. I mean, they're dirty and they're actually pretty close to 153 thousandths but i'm going to clean these up and see what i've got when i get them all clean and stacked back together 
And before you take those measurements with the depth mic, there's a process of torquing these three bolts that hold this retainer plate on, and spinning the hub and retorquing the bolts, and spinning the hub and retorquing the bolts, and spinning the hub. I've already done all that. It's just time to get the shims in here and get on with it. So I'm sure most of you probably aren't even watching this part of the video anyway. Got them cleaned up, and these are measuring right at about 151 thousandths. I'm looking for 153 thousandths, so I'm going to run over there to the shims that I got out of the parts truck, the one that I got the hub off of, and see if I've got about a 2,000th shim over there. Did a little bit of rearranging here, ended up pulling one of the shims that was originally in this pack out and adding one from the other truck, and I've got this shim pack measured in between 153 and 154 thousandths now, so good to go. Pulled this retainer piece back off the truck now. I've got the bolts in it and I've got the shim pack installed on there. So those bolts will thread directly into the spindle of the axle and then the shim pack is what sets and adjusts the amount of squeeze that that retainer puts on the bearings. There it is installed on the truck for the final time. You can just barely see those shims in there in between the retainer and the axle spindle. Those eight bolts right there get torqued to uh, 111 foot-pounds, I believe, and that's all there is to it. The preload on the bearings is set. Final drive time. So I've got this final all disassembled. Everything's cleaned up and it's ready to go back together. So there's the center cap. That's the piece that's got the Cleveland Brothers tag on the other side of it that you've already seen. And actually I've got a piece of paper here. So this planetary carrier here has got a date code on it, M-U-N-U-N-N. -N -N. As you can see, I've wrote down there. So that comes out to 210100, which is January 21st of 2000. That's a cat date code. So that is the original planetary carrier to the truck. That's a 2000 or 2001 model truck, I forget which, but anyway. So whatever Cleveland Brothers did, they definitely didn't replace the carrier, and it's, it's in excellent shape. There's not a thing wrong with it. It looks basically brand new. So what I think they definitely did do is put all three new gears in. These gears are in really, really good shape, almost brand new looking. The bearings are the same way, and the washers are in really good shape too. The shafts are nearly perfect. They look kind of rough, but they're not. That's just a little discoloration from running. They're, they're perfectly smooth. You can't feel anything at all in them. So everything here is in really good shape. That's the ring gear. That'll go on first. I'll show you that when I put it on. But uh, these are really simple. So you've got a steel washer and a brass washer on each side of each gear. The brass washer goes against the planetary carrier. A, because that's the most expensive piece, and B, because the gear is going to be way harder than the planetary carrier. Those gears are going to be harder than hell. So you want the steel against the gear and the softer brass against the planetary carrier.
All right, I got this final drive all together and ready to go on the truck. Uh, what you just watched was just a quick demonstration on how one of these gears goes in this thing. You can see a lot better from the other way with the with the final drive flipped over, but you've got to actually put these together facing this way because these pins have to go in from this side. This is the end of the pin with the snap ring and then this machined ledge. This machined ledge is going to ride right on the inside of this machined out groove here on the center cap. And that's what holds the pins in the final drive. So uh, this is just a real basic planetary setup. I've got what's called the sun gear here. This is the driven gear coming from the differential. These three gears are called the planet gears. So the sun gear would be down in here like this. And it's going to be driving the planet gears around like that. And then on the outside, the planet gears are going to be meshing with the ring gear, which is held stationary by the axle housing. So what that does is it drives this entire final drive around. The final drive bolts to the wheel hub, which is what the wheel rim is on. The wheel rim obviously is attached to the tire. And so uh, that's what makes the wheels on the bus go round and round, so to speak. Had to quit yesterday. It's pretty normal for me. I can't ever seem to work on one thing for very long, but had to run and pick this block up from the machine shop. Pretty, ain't it? There's the old crankshaft. C15. All right, so I'm working on getting the ring gear snapped ring back onto this hub now. And this is a little more of a challenge than what I thought it was gonna be originally. So what you've got is a big snap ring and it fits in a groove in this center hub piece here. And you've got to get that snap ring on there and compressed first before you can slide the ring gear on there. Uh, if you try to put the ring gear on first, there's no room to get the snap ring in there. So you're supposed to use a big pair of snap ring pliers, but I don't have anything that'll hold this snap ring together very well. And I think even if you had the right pliers, it would still be kind of a challenge. So this is what I came up with. I've just pulled it together and then put a zip tie on there and then snugged it on together some more after that with the zip tie. And I think this is gonna work pretty good. It's holding the snap ring on there nice and tight all the way around. Shit. It's close, it's just barely hitting right in here. Let me get a screwdriver. There it is. Okay. Now, I can knock that off there. And I slip this out. That snap ring should pop right into place. Yeah, there it is. It's in. I'll straighten that up a little, but it's in. I just watched that footage back and realized you couldn't really see what I was doing once I got the ring gear put on there. So this is what it looks like. Zip tie trick worked good. That's probably the way I'll do that every time, especially if you only have one set of hands like I do. That's uh, the way to do that. Over ring on.
They want these bolts at 137 foot-pounds and then an additional 60 degrees. I don't want it to push that axle shaft back in. I need to probably have to tap on this gear or something to keep that snap ring groove exposed. There we go. Just like that. Now all I got to do is put the snap ring on there in that groove and that's on and ready to rock. All right, should be good. There's a little point on that center cap that holds that axle shaft in. You can see where it's rubbed on it. Well, it's 60 degree parts, a little more than my torque wrench wants. It's uh, somewhere over 300 foot pounds. So got a bunch of little white dots painted on here. Gonna have to do this the old fashioned way. Got the final drive all sealed up and torqued up. Got the two little block off plates pulled out of these two lines back here and clamps are on and tight. So the next thing I'm gonna do is get this oil out from under here and then I'm gonna pressure wash this all off real good, get it nice and clean. And then I wanna fire it up and get some oil flowing through this brake unit. I wanna make sure these dual cone seals in here aren't gonna leak real bad. I mean, it's gonna take some running time to find out if they're gonna leak at all, but uh, I can find out pretty quick right here if I'm going to have a major leak before I put a wheel on. Got this final filled up with oil, so got to top the axle off next. Well, it wants another bucket. Hopefully this is the last one it wants because this is the last one I got.
she full. Well, it's been sitting overnight and about half the day today. I don't see any leaks. Final drive's good and dry. And these dual cone seals in here seem to be holding their own. I'm a little worried about these. These brake axles on these trucks are kind of notorious for being a little bit leaky anyway. 740s are the same way. But uh, I guess time will tell. So far, so good. So I'm going to throw a wheel and tire on this and call it done. Look at that big old tire. I know from listening to all the YouTube safety experts that there's virtually no chance I'm gonna make it out from under here alive.
So the way I do these with the telehandler is obviously the first thing I do is hang the tire on the wheel rim as you saw. Then come in here and put this outer flange on and this piece here and get those on there to where they'll just hang. And then after that you can spread the forks to the right width to catch this outer flange like that and that and then push that whole outer flange in which is going to push the entire bead of the tire in and that'll give you enough room to get this slipped on to the wheel rim far enough in that you can get the o-ring on the locking ring and the little locking block that goes here so all i got to do is put those three things on and then i can back away from it and uh, if all goes well after that all i got to do is air it up o-ring Make sure that's not rolled. I had to fight with this locking ring a little bit. I got this piece of steel wedged in here to spread that apart. I think I've about got it now. This is a pretty tight, tight one. They're usually not quite this bad. And there's a little lock deal that goes in there. So now you got to get that lined up so that when this bead piece right here slips back, it's going to fit into that slot there. So I'm going to lubricate everything now really good and then just back away from it. This is just some more rubber lubricant stuff mixed with water. I've got the thick stuff on there already. Now we're missing there on the block deal just a little bit. Gonna have to get that straightened up. That's close enough, it's gonna go. I'll just have to hold it up here like this just a little bit. And it'll go. Don't have the valve stem in yet. You get more air through it without that in there. I meant to say valve core, not valve stem. The valve core is not in. All right, I'm plugging it into the air now. Start putting a little air to it and see what we're gonna get. All right, it's coming, it's airing up. You don't wanna stand in front of this, especially once it gets a little more pressure in it. That's lining up now, it's gonna go. Looks like everything's seating up good back here. Everything looks good up here. Real nice. I put the valve core in there now and uh, I've got about 30 pounds in it. It's about half the air. So what I like to do now Go ahead and do a soapy water test. I'm gonna have a problem, you might as well find out before you get all the air in there. I 
seeing anything around the valve stem leaking. Been all around it pretty good, pretty heavy. Don't see any bubbles anywhere. I think I'm good to go. I'll go ahead and put the rest of the air in it and let it sit overnight and uh, tomorrow should be in good shape. All right, well, that tire still got all the air in it that I put in it last night, so it's not leaking. Should be good to go there. Next thing I'm gonna do is raise this front suspension up. You might've noticed that it looks like the front end sitting a little low, and that's because it is. You can dump the oil out of the front suspension cylinders on these trucks to lower the cab height down for transport. And this one's in the lowered position right now, so I'm gonna raise it back up. All you do is take a measurement from the top of the wheel rim the bottom of this fender up here and then you want to raise it until that measurement increases by four inches so i'm going to do that first and then i'll take off and drive it make sure the final drive is final driving and the brakes are breaking and all that good shit I guess that's the story of how a hillbilly replaced a hub on a 40 ton cat haul truck. I'm not really sure why anybody would watch this, but if you do, I appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you next time.